Good day, my friends. My name is Lonnie Lynn. And if you are watching this, I want to thank you for taking your time to hear my presentation. Uh, I want to tell you a tale. I'll make it short. Uh, I want to tell you a tale about a pair of shoes. Uh, actually, the tale begins with, tale begins in 1984, uh, it was the NBA All-Star Game held in Denver, Colorado. It was uh, an event that my 12-year-old my son and I had attended. It was our event we would attend each year as a divorced parent. We and I looked forward to attending the All-Star Game each year. So the game was in Denver in 1984. And he inquired, he made a few questions to me about how to become a ball boy. Did the ball boys travel with the team, et cetera. Fortunately, uh, I had a former teammate from the St. Louis Hawks named Rod Thorne that was a general manager for the Chicago Bulls. So I inquired of Rod what the qualifications were and how could my son uh, eventually become a ball boy. Oh, well, two weeks later, my son was a ball boy for the Chicago Bulls. Certainly that was his first year, but it also was Michael Jordan's first year. And speaking of, by the way, I want to say happy birthday to Michael and my buddy here in Denver, Chris. Uh, their birthdays fall on February the 17th, so happy birthday, you guys. Uh, to get back to it, uh, Michael and the other players recognized and they encouraged uh, the kids around the team and the ball boys to, to do well and, and to be hard working and what have you. And they did work hard because unloading those buses is pretty difficult and what have you. It's more than being a water boy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Michael and the other players would give, give autographs to the kids for the family and teachers and school, et cetera. Uh, Michael gave my son a pair of his rookie shoes that he played in. And my son gave them to me for safekeeping. Uh, and I, I, at this point, I've kept them 26 years. And in 205, I asked Michael to well, I, I contacted his offices, various offices, and, and a num number of people uh, to see if he would autograph them for me, which he consented to do and did. Uh, the process was, was actually was quickly decided, and the shoes were returned to me within five days. Like, I sent them out by the postal service, and they sent them back by UPS. It was, Kind of funny story in it when I had to, uh, the lady from Michael's office track the shoes down. She did a tracking on them. The delivery man had left them on my porch. That's about the scariest that, uh, part of owning the shoes. Uh, some of the information in, in shipping the shoes, like the postal markings and what have you, I, I wouldn't call them trivial, but they're some of the smaller authenticities, like the dates that, that I shipped them out, the dates they shipped them back to me, uh, the insurance taken out on the shoes to ship them, et cetera. I think what a true collector or uh, follower of Michael Jordan's career would be interested in, in terms of this historic keepsake, would be things like, uh, the fact that Michael wore different size on each foot. But you true Michael Jordan fans knew that already, didn't you? Just a little bit of trivia. Uh, ironically, he wore them a, a different size, and I won't even say the numbers because uh, too many people copycat. But anyway, uh, Michael, besides the numbers being different, the product code number, which is very significant, but this one is very unusual, and I think it should only go to 
the purchase of the shoes, but the product code number is in here for authenticity and the size of the shoe that verifies it was definitely customized uh, is in here. Uh, the purpose of me, you know, asking for your time is that I sit down and condense an exclusive list of people who I think truly love the game and are students of the game or scholars of the game more so than fans and have a particular character and love for the game. Uh, saying that, what I'm actually saying is I'm very concerned about who the next owner would be. Uh, I would like for it to be in the same line of ownership that the shoe has always been. I think it's a quality line and families. And uh, so it was, the list was handpicked and I wanted to provide you with the opportunity to make one bid before it went to a public sale where they may end up in the hands of anybody. Uh, some of the logic and reasoning behind this is, is we have, I have direct purpose for where a large portion of the funds would be going. Uh, I'm a student, I, I attended Wilberforce University. It's the first black college in America, first black private owned college in America. It was also, it was even used, the slave owners used to send their kids to this university. It was founded in 1856. And I, I've been made aware that the school is struggling. And through the help of the ball boy that Michael gave the shoes to my son, who you all may know as Common, the rapper, entertainer, artist, what have you. Uh, through him, uh, through me acquiring the shoes through him and, and dealing with Wilberforce University, which I attended, um, we're gonna put together some a major show to raise funds for Wilberforce University. Uh, I'm also, I was diagnosed with prostate and liver cancer on November the 9th, 2009. And it gave me reason to want to become involved in the, in the cure research. And we want to put that through Wilberforce University also uh, through, with the help of a Dr. Sabi in terms of alternative treatment and nutrition to see if we can address uh, and, and help with the cancer treatment and research. So, uh, I, 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 like I say, I kept the shoes for 26 years and now I have need and purpose. So, that's what we'll be working with and dealing with. And when you consider your bids, uh, you know where it's going. And thank you very much.